Now, as uh, Dr. Nielsen just pointed out, uh, it looks like uh, the U.S. is in no rush to try and change their way in terms of dealing with North Korea. What would you say to that notion, Professor? I agree with it, well, what Dr. Nielsen said because there is a, a growing suspicion and concern in, 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 in Washington and also in South Korea and many capitals around the world because there has been no uh, kind of proof that North Korea is really willing to, genuinely willing to uh, kind of commit itself to a denuclearization under whatever the name, either CVID, FABD, uh, because it is very difficult for North Korea unless they get the full sec security and stability assurance of its own regime. Uh, that's why they are just trying to get some more assurance in first in exchange for the final de declaration of their the scrapping of the nuclear weapons. So it is very difficult, but that's why uh, we, this time, as President Moon mentioned, it really needs very firm reserve on the part of Kim Jong-un again to finally give up and clearly at least a kind of commission that they are willing to you know, give up its nuclear arsenal and providing some in inspections to come and inspect. So this is a kind of reciprocal way, but this, the problem always lies in detail. I think there must be some progress made between at the, at the summit meeting th today, but there will be more at uh, summit meeting tomorrow because I don't think for two hours today, it will be very difficult again Maybe they were just con confirming their own position vis-a-vis -vis each other. And maybe the way they have to go, and particularly what would it be included in the final in a joint statement. So that's uh, what is very important for tomorrow. But I think this, as he just pointed out, this is a very difficult moment again, how going, we are going to break this deadlock. It's very difficult. Uh, but I think, I hope, because given all the kind of the welcoming uh, remarks by the two presidents and the chairman Kim as well, and also the feeling uh, we, can, we can read uh, the, uh, on their faces are very positive, uh, given all these kind of problems and also criticism and skepticism, not only in the United States, but also growing in, in South Korea as well. So they, the two leaders, fully understand the concerns and worries about the lack of progress, sufficient progress, according to Mr. Uh, Mr. Pompe uh, Mr. Pompeo. Uh, I think this is what they are going to do tomorrow. So how are they going to, to pro uh, you know, find a, the most a proper wording for that really signify the, the significant the commitment of the North Korean leadership to the denuclearization process? Uh, but I think still we have, we have to be very concerned about right. not to make too, rate, too much cons uh, you know, expectation out of the joint statement. Guarded optimism and lowered expectation is the key. Uh, as we speak, Professor, we're getting some footage of uh, President Moon Jae-in and the First Lady uh, Kim Jong-suk over in North Korea with all the uh, meetings and handshakes going on right now. Uh, a lot of uh, hustle and bustle for mm -hmm. the, the staff in North Korea to make sure things are in order because uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un is in his element and it's important to make sure he is seen in a very positive light. This is the Pekha one, I believe. Yes, this is the footage that uh, when they arrived, when they first, when President Moon Jae-in arrived in Pyongyang and after the car parade when he moved to the Pekawan State um, Guest House. So this is where um, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un guided him through the newly innovated State Guest House. And they also shared um, talk here. Um, saying that they've got very close and compared to, he said that because President Moon has been on various overseas trips, compared to those countries, North Korea may be not of those standards, but still they tried their best so that um, Moon Jae-in feels welcome here. Certainly, uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un, uh, according to some of the little sound, sound bites we have of his uh, statements or exchanges with uh, President Moon Jae-in, he certainly seems to have a sense of humor and uh, certainly doesn't seem to take himself too seriously in the face of uh, his South Korean counterpart. Uh, I remember him joking about how, why don't you cross over? It's easy. And they moved back and forth and created quite a moving and memorable scene there at the, at the border. That's right. I think, you know, this may be considered as a kind of uh, his uh, humbleness because the, uh, at the Pamsan Declaration, at the Pamsan meeting, they said our road creatures are just terrible. Don't try to come to you on the road. Instead, just fly us directly to us. So this may be signed as a kind of uh, very humble and very humiliating. I mean, the position vis-a-vis -vis his senior uh, counterpart, which is Mr. Moon Jae-in. But I think on the other hand, he really tried to show how poor, how miserable their situation is even though they are trying to improve their situation day by day under his leadership, but still they are a long way to go to catch up with any other counterparts in the South and in, not to mention the United States. So one, uh, one way he, he's trying to show I'm a very normal person, normal leader. 
I'm not a, I'm, I'm not a psycho, I'm not, a cra I'm, I'm not crazy. I'm a very just normal person, human being. I'm trying to show our, the, our, our society as it is, because right. there's a lot of problems, criticism, how they are, you know, manage all these kind of problems coming out of uh, blue almost, certainly. So they are ready to control, and he's really trying to show, I'm in full control of my society, I'm ready for, uh, be accountable for my the future of my right. It's a my tall population. order, though, because there's a reputation that's been set up from his predecessors, and it's uh, being transferred to him in terms of a dangerous uh, leader. Mm -hmm. Now we're looking at the footage of uh, uh, the the dignitaries coming in uh, through the motorcade. I believe the roof was open at one point, and which mm -hmm. was quite a, a big gesture from North Korea and South Korea as well, because it would have been a, a logistical security nightmare for the secret servicemen in terms of allowing the two leaders to pop out of the. Uh, sunroof and waved to the people as they made their way to the venue. I believe this is? This is the first lady schedule. Um, at 2.30 um, p.m. today, they were scheduled to go to the Ongnyu Children's Hospital. And accompanying um, South Korean First Lady Kim Jong-suk is North Korea's First Lady Lee Seo-ju. Now, a lot of spotlight was on the First Lady diplomacy because North Korea wanted to show itself as a normal state. So we've seen his um, wife, Lee Seo-ju, accompany him on his state visit to China. And we also saw, saw her greet um, the first couple the South Korean first couple at the airport today. So here at the hospital, um, the two first ladies were looked around CT and x-ray scan rooms, and they also watched a physical education class for children at the hospital. Now, the hospital is a new facility constructed in October 2013 on Kim Jong-un's instruction. Some 180 doctors are reportedly working here, and it's a six-story hospital building. So we can see... Um, Kim Jong-suk greeting the doctors and possibly nurses at the Ong Yu Children's Hospital. So we heard that it's the biggest hospital in Pyongyang. Right. Uh, it's, it's clear that uh, Kim Jong-un wants to em place emphasis on his efforts to uh, uh, revitalize the North Korean economy uh, early on when the, the president was heading towards uh, their quarters. Uh, they took a longer route to show some of the most prosperous uh, sites of their cities with a 70-story building and all the uh, glitz and glamour of those high-rise structures, which did not seem fully occupied, though, at this point. That's right. So what um, many experts have said is that North Korea probably wants to show off these um, because it's like the first um, time that it's being so broadcast on international media. They haven't done this in the past, so they actually wanted to show that some areas are maybe not prosperous, but that they are... They're on their way. Yes, They're working right. towards it. So this meeting, uh, this visit to the Children's Hospital, only Children's Hospital, happened around 2.30 p.m., so that was, uh, that was slightly before the, uh, the summit began. Yes. 15 minutes before the summit began. So the summit was supposed to take place at 3.30, but it was a little bit delayed to 3.45, so this schedule took place before the summit between the two leaders. Right. Things seem to be moving smoothly, except that we did hear there were some uh, hiccups in terms of uh, scheduling, uh, I guess, uh, mistakes, and uh, one North Korean official was uh, stood up. Yes, that's right. Uh, um, parliamentary leaders were... Um, Clearly, the chairs of the ruling Democratic Party and two liberal parties were actually supposed to meet with the vice chairman of the North's. Um, it would be their counterpart, actually. And they were supposed to meet these, um, meet their um, North Korean counterparts, but there was a mix-up in their schedule, so they failed to turn up, and the North Korean official was left there waiting. So we will have to see what the problem was there and whether they can arrange a new meeting, because they were supposed to um, hand over a letter on behalf of the South Korean National Assembly Chair to hold inter-Korean parliamentary talks. So we will have to see if that schedule is rescheduled. Something that they can look back and uh, talk about fondly as an interesting episode between the two Koreas. Uh, for now, the tour, we have more footage coming from the tour of the hospital. I believe uh, in the past, uh, the, the former uh, First Lady, uh, Lee Hee-hyo, visited a maternity ward and uh, North Korea wanted to boast its, uh, its, uh, its ability to continue to uh, uh, improve its population back then and now this time it's a uh, it's a children's hospital is there any specific reasons why this place is chosen as the first stop for the first lady 
Well, North Korea has been focusing more on economic growth and developing its economy, so we can see that they're paying more attention to its children, its young people. And um, the presidential office said earlier this morning that the, North, the northern side actually proposed visiting the hospital and later um, uh, a college for a music college, a prestigious college. So these are very um, well organized meeting, organized schedules that the North Korea had had in mind, um, ready for the South Korean First Lady. Right, the soft diplomacy. Uh, I guess some critics might see it as a bit of a smoke and mirrors to divert your attention from the the main event between the two leaders. But looking at it from a more positive light, it means uh, there's more proactive involvement on the in those around the leaders. I agree with you because this, all the program, all of the, the schedule have been meticulously made by the North Korean uh, authorities because this is not just a diversion of the focus on the two leaders uh, meeting. I think this is a tremendous plus uh, because this is what we can achieve in our in a frequent exchange with uh, North Korea uh, because we have a serious problem with birth rate and you know, younger people just remain single and not, not wanting to get married. That South Korea can this is a very heavy issue for South Korea, but also the, the college issues as well because we, uh, we, have, we have experienced very falling rate of students registered at, at major universities and in both in, in the capital city and also in the countryside. So this is a very quite, quite contrast to South Korean case. North Korea is still enjoying a very relative high birth rate, even though, uh, because we have a totally different idea. This North Korea is a very impoverished country and the, the birth rate must be low. But because of the Kim Jong-un's leadership and because of the specific assistance to these programs and also the education is very important. So that's in, this is intentionally uh, scheduled and by the North Korean uh, uh, the authorities. And I think, you know, looking for the kind of very positive uh, kind of uh, repercussions and responses from the outside, or particularly from the, from the South. There seemed less uh, restriction in monitoring compared to the previous visits mm -hmm. by uh, the predecessor of the current uh, president, the First Lady. It seems visible in North yeah. Korea with a live broadcast from mm -hmm. Pyongyang itself. It's almost unheard of. Uh, because they, um, Kim Jong-un is very confident in his own ability to control the society. And I think they, he made a lot, of, uh, a lot of contributions to make the city much more modern, much more better. Uh, the, uh, painting the, the, the facade of all the main buildings and building a very strong uh, kind of very famous streets almost one by by year and so he's ready to show that we are this much developed and we are we have a tremendous kind of potential for further development later on if we can continue this kind of dialogue with South Korea and the United States so this is a very uh, in a meticulous uh, scheduled and meticulously articulated uh, plan by the North Korean leadership to show off to the outside world Right. It would have been more fascinating if uh, the South Korean uh, sports and cultural stars were accompanying the First Lady to the children uh, hospitals. It might have provided a, a source of uh, entertainment or uh, the wow factor in some sense. Yes, they could have given a K-pop show, but um, that wasn't the case. Um, some South Korean artist, Ailey and Jiko, will actually be giving a joint performance with the Samjoon Orchestra tonight where um, the, the, the art performance that South Korean President Moon Jae-in will be watching or probably has watched because it was scheduled for 5.30 today. Um, it's the same one that was actually performed in Gangneung and Seoul back in February when the Pyeongchang Winter Olympics was held and there's speculation that Kim Jong-un might also have been there as well. Right, uh, the active cultural and sports exchange is something that's very important and played a key role in turning things around for uh, South Korea and North Korea's relations. Uh, some uh, uh, diplomats said that it should work from down, bottom up approach, not the other way around in mm -hmm. terms of mm -hmm. making sure a thaw in relations is possible. That's right, because this is, uh, their motto is, let's begin with an easy part uh, rather than hard part, because hard part will be eventually denigrated in North Korean weapons. So beginning with a kind of sports e events, activities and the cultural events between two countries, because we saw tremendous you know, progress achievements over in the last you know, Olympic Games and also the Asia Games as well. So they are proposing that they're going to form a unified uh, team for the 19, 2032, for example, like uh, Olympic Games again. So because this is uh, easy to start and it's to kind of proceed from now on. And I think many people watching these kind of events and dancings rather than very hard, uh, you know, boys are tough like uh, stuff like uh, 
nuclear issues and military tensions along the DMZ. So I think this is a good start, and this is not to just intentionally divert our fo you know, focus on the more harder stuff, which is the denuclearization. I, this, they should go you know, side by side in tandem with each other. So there is no need to blame that we, North Korea is f focusing on this in you know, the sports events. I think it's which quite natural. We have to be much more accommodating this approach because uh, in the end, this is, will be in our interest as well. Right, it'll uh, eventually lead to uh, more important topics, but nothing happens without uh, initial attempts, and it's mm. very important to break the ice or melt the ice. I think we might still be in the process of that. This is only uh, the third meeting between the two leaders, and of course the second one was uh, carried out somewhat covertly. So uh, this time, with the uh, First Lady continually uh, paying, uh, we're getting continued footage or, or some of the repeat footage of the highlights from her visit there. Uh, the members of the press seems to be extra busy as well from uh, the North Korean side, carrying the letters and making sure they get some good angles there. Uh, the, the First Lady of South Korea, she has been very much in the spotlight with alongside President Moon Jae-in, even during uh, the presidential election ones where uh, President Moon Jae-in back then, uh, a candidate who, uh, who came up short, right? Yeah, she has been very supportive of her husband, President Moon Jae-in. Um, she's turned up at major events um, accompanying the president. She also has events of her own, and she always accompanies him on state visits as well. We can clearly see that she's also making um, her position well known. So we can see that they're producing a synergy effect. Right, and uh, there's a lot to be said about uh, the North Korean First Lady as well. She is a uh, very uh, established uh, uh, person in the, in the field of uh, music, I believe. Yes, that's right. She studied music. Um, that's a commonality between the First Ladies of South Korea and North Korea. Um, to be um, exact, he was a vocalist of the North's famous Eunhasu Orchestra. So after the visit to the hospital, we may see the footage um, later on. They visited the Kim Won-gyun University of Music. It's a prestigious university for music and dance in North Korea, and it's named after North Korean composer Kim Won-gyun. So um, there they were supposed to attend an orchestra performance after observing a class as well. Right, uh, the musical um, similarities between the two are certainly a great way for the two first ladies to bond and continue to uh, find out what other areas of uh, interest they could share with each other. And uh, yeah, the, the orchestra performances, uh, it's, it's something that we, we foresaw coming, but at the same time, there were some mentions of a possible uh, patronage to the mass games in North Korea as well, right, earlier on? Yes, initially they said um, Korea, uh, the South Korean president could be watching um, a gymnastics mass performance. It's called um, The Shining called Fatherland is a new program that's been instilled this time. That's and right. It's, it's a way of uh, sending another message to the rest of the world that we are serious about change because this is the first time in uh, close to half a decade they made an entirely new program mm -hmm. that is free of uh, propaganda or aggressive rhetoric towards the U.S. and what would be considered hostile forces against North Korea. Mm -hmm. You know, some people in South Korea are predicting that Mr. Moon and his wife might watch the mass, so-called mass games in the Lungnado May 1st Stadium. But I think it's, it's maybe it's Again, South North, you know, North Korea's intention not to show this time because this might carry too negative impact. The uh, There's image a risk, of yes, right. because this is a one, you know, mon, you know, uh, one. It's a dictator ruled country again, and mobilizing tens of thousands of people for and this country, children. children as well. Right. So this contradicts his visit and her visit to the children's hospital. So that's why probably they chances are not so good. They might just skip the trip to this. Uh, uh, the Lumna Do uh, Stadium is that they might see some other uh, performance events at a dinner tonight or tomorrow. So these are all speculations, but there are good reasons to believe otherwise. They might visit the stadium again this time because it's already been released uh, a couple of days ago and people have watched already. So this kind of repetition of the same game, even though under a different name with a different guests at the, at the stadium, right. uh, have not, will not play a very its reputation well. might precede yes. itself. Well, we're getting a new footage right now, a change of scenery mm -hmm. uh, at long last. We have some scenes coming from the Kim Won-gyun University of Music. Mm -hmm.
That's right. So to give you a recap again, the Kim Won-gyun University of Music is a prestigious university for music and dance in North Korea. And this um, schedule is probably put in because of the commonality of music the First Ladies have. Um, First Lady Kim Jong-suk also studied music in Korea while she was at college. Um, the same goes for um, North Korean First Lady Lee seo ju who was also vocalist of a famous um, orchestra in North Korea, the Eunhasu Orchestra. So here, um, they attended an orchestra performance after meeting the college's principal and also observing a class. So I'm sure they must have a lot to talk about here. Right, and they're checking out the campus um, outside of the campus as well. Uh, very luscious greeneries there, and they're entering another building. Uh, is this uh, part of the music, music uh, college? Um, I believe so. The schedule that we've been heard from the press course is that they attended a performance, musical perfor an orchestra performance to be exact, and they also had a meeting, a short meeting with the college's principal, and they also observed a music class. So it looks like an auditorium now, so this is where they might have enjoyed an orchestra performance. Right, it looks like a lot of nooks and crannies of North Korea are being uh, shown, not just to the VIPs, but for all of us watching from home and abroad. Uh, certainly a, a gesture from North Korea that, that shows that it's a, it's a, it wants to display that it's a legitimate state, as you mentioned earlier, not something that's bent on uh, disrupting the rest of the world. That's right, because there has been a very negative image of North Korea we have had for the last uh, several decades. And now Mr. Kim Jong-un believed that it's time to debunk this kind of negative myth about North Korean reality. North Korea, even though it's an impoverished country yet, uh, we are ready to open and we are going to accommodate all the, coming, all the good things and new things out of the, coming from the outside world. So this is a part of the design that he is very much confident in, in his own ability to reform and open up the society gradually one by one. So this is a very important first uh, step for the Kim Jong-un leadership that they are pretty much ready to open and it's reform its uh, society in the years to come. Even though these terminals was a kind of taboo in society, in North Korea society, but even that term might be kind of abolished because of the, under the new leadership of Kim Jong-un. So ready to open the society, hopefully, but we, they're not talking about the denuclearization per se because it has so many you know, security implications and many economic implications vis-a-vis -vis South Korea and the United States. Right. So this kind of opening of the society and looking at all the you know, loops and corners of society on the way, along the way, uh, along the motorcade, uh, this is intentionally made, uh, ridiculous made by the leadership and also Kim Yo-jong, I guess. Right, uh, and this speaking a, of Kim yeah. Yo-jong, the First Lady of North Korea, and of course uh, South Korea's First Lady sitting side by side watching a, a grand performance that involves a lot of instruments, including traditional Korean instruments. Uh, interesting fusion of uh, East and West, and uh, I saw some of the uh, aides constantly updating the two about what's going on. I wonder what was uh, being whispered in their ears back then. So probably like the background of what's happening. Oh, detailed explanations of the program that's being displayed before them, I see. Let's just have a listen to the music that's being played since we have the footage right now. There's uh, some bits and pieces that sort of reminded me of uh, the traditional folk song Arirang. Perhaps it's, a, it's an updated uh, remix version from the North Korean side. It it's, has this uh, very uh, grand heroic theme to it. Yes, it seems, it seems as if it was the Arirang. It was a bit cut up, but um, I think it's like an updated version of the Arirang. Right, and now a vocal performance as well. Let's have a listen.
basically trying to convey to the outside world is North Korea is really keen to kind of develop and promote the traditional Korean art. Uh, this traditional songs uh, and also plus some uh, Western, uh, Western instruments as well as Western instruments. So North Korea is pretty good at Korean music, traditional music, and that is a case becoming, that's a case in South Korea as well, because many South Koreans have become very patriotic, and right. they're looking toward the more traditional Korean song. So there's another com common between the two, between two sides, North and South there Korea. There are some elements of traditional Korean yeah, music so that this may is have a been very, lost, again, a very sophisticated aware. way of showing it their uh, ability, uh, performance ability, vis-a-vis -vis as opposed to the grandiose mass style games, which right. is quite contrasting to me. This is a rather okay. humble size performance. Very, yes, to and the this really shows the reality of North Koreans, their li uh, daily, daily lives and their uh, But it certainly seems like it's moving in the small audience that's in the auditorium. That's right. That means we don't have to mobilize the whole mass of right. games for this particular show. It saves show. a lot of people from exactly. the trouble of having to be on their toes to make sure they... Again, this is a sign that North Korea is really to North Korea is a very effective, efficient society, just like any other countries in the West. Right. So we hear that they played a total of three songs, and we could also actually see North Korean uh, First Lady. These are just singing along, right. and South Korean First Lady looking at her with a very motherly face. <laughs> Hoping she, she, she knew the lyrics so she could sing together, possibly. Uh, it's about unity, uh, yes. the song that's being sung by the... The title is We Are One. We Are One, one. Yeah. right, that's the title, correctly translated performed by the uh, orchestra and uh, the choir. Mm -hmm. So also looking at this performance was South Korea's um, delegation, which included um, musical artists. We can see Ailey in the background. Right, we can see the colorful hair people that stood <laughs> out from the rest. Okay. So we've seen a lot of musical performances, um, exchanges between the two since um, the relations between North Korea and South Korea thawed after the Pyeongchang um, Winter Olympics. Um, the North Korean orchestra also gave performances in South Korea. South Korean artists also made a reciprocal um, performance in North Korea. So we've seen these musical and cultural exchanges um, rise a lot after the relations between the two got better. Right, and there's more planned and there's more discussions about future collaborations and uh, cooperation and possibly joint uh, projects, not just for the field of uh, music, but uh, arts and uh, culture and sports as well, which is why, uh, interestingly, we have some sports delegations joining the team this time. Including Chabam, the famous football. Right, <laughs> yes. famous in Germany at one in time, Germany. Yes, more so than in Korea. <laughs> And the choir who needs who need to uh, maintain a very uh, I guess rigid posture. The performers seem uh, somewhat relaxed mm -hmm. and casual. Yeah, I can notice that. Okay. Uh, speaking of uh, the, one of the songs that sounded a lot like Arirang, I believe a uh, South Korean composer uh, who is in North Korea right now, who was among those who were watching this uh, performance at the auditorium, Kim Young Sok, I believe, he has mm -hmm. his own rendition of Arirang to be performed before the two leaders in the upcoming performances, right? That's right. Um, composer Kim Young-suk said in a press interview before he left that he would be making a performance. He would also be making a piano recital as well in front of the two leaders, possibly. Standing ovation given to the VIPs, the two first ladies, who were sitting side by side, watching and being deeply moved by the performance. Interesting that performers are uh, applauding the audience in turn this time. Thanking them for being here. Seated mm -hmm. again for some photo ops, I suppose. The performance, you know, giving the applause to right. the audience because that includes first ladies. Right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, they have to show respect. I that guess it, to some, uh, these are two as their, their uh, senior yes, uh, student, right. perhaps, or our scholars in the, right. in the field of music. Oh. So we expect, it, we didn't know it was going to be this um, long of a performance, but it seems that they did actually prepare a lot. And right. Possibly prepare some extra encore performances mm -hmm. in case, well, I'm sure they knew that uh, the First Lady would be impressed. They prepared thoroughly with uh, the specific audience in mind.
So just to give you a recap of where we are, this is the Kim Wangan University of Music, a prestigious university for music and dance in Pyongyang. I've noticed is that um, South Korea's First Lady Kim Jong-suk also engages a lot with North Korean officials there. She's not just like subdued, she does, she right. actually asks. There is no glass wall. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we don't know exactly what she's asking, but we've seen footage showing that in her engaging a lot. Right, which is a very welcome attribute. It's, it's hard to be in that position, to be that laid back and be approachable. Um, and she, as we can see in the footage, she's constantly exchanging conversations and making eye contact and leaning an attentive ear to learn more about what she is observing at that point. I think at this point in inter-Korean relations, showing a sense of a genuine interest, concern, care and connection is important. And certainly the First Lady seems to be playing a good example, setting a good uh, uh, example uh, as a role model for others to follow in terms of inter-Korean interactions. Because it's, because it's hard for us to have this uh, sense of uh, familiarity with our, our, our walls torn down, especially when we're conversing with North Korean counterparts who come from a more rigid uh, upbringing. That's right. So um, experts were saying that the visit this time around would be an opportunity for um, the two sides to get rid of that um, perspective because last time the first ladies only got to meet, meet on one occasion which was at the banquet but now they're spending a lot more time together so like um, Kim Jong-un said to Moon Jae-in like they're going to get much more closer after the, the three-day summit. Right. As we can see from these uh, profile shots of select individuals, those who are seated with their mouths open and in awe are the South Korean celebrities who are um, being more or less very impressed by the performance, the traditional performances in, in North Korea. Uh, and it was interesting to note that most of these uh, celebrities or uh, K-pop idols were dressed more uh, neatly and more conservatively uh, in this setting instead of their lavish uh, uh, glittery outfits. That's right. Um, from what I remember, Chiku also had bleached hair, but today it seemed very dark. So He blended in yeah. with the locals. So it seemed they're more reserved today for this special occasion. Right. Yeah, but the North Korean side you know, decided and because this must be an ideal place for the First Lady because she is a professional uh, mu musician and she knows a lot of things about the performance of this type of you know. That's why she is really love to talk to the, the gentleman next, sitting next to her, next to her runner. And I uh, said, so again, this is a good sign, a decision by North Korea to show a, this kind of small, but is a very uh, professional performance by the North Korean musicians and dancers, which have tremendous you know, consonants with the first ladies in, from, the, from the South, uh, because she's really uh, happy with seeing all these kind of performance just performed before her, before her and, and we all accompanied by the Korean musician dancers uh, behind. So I think this is again a very good gesture by North Korean tradition. Even in the culture uh, area, there are a lot of things to you know, discuss and exchange in the years to come. And again, this is a very important, very meaningful start for the first lady to watch over these kind of performances.
just watching from a distance through the camera, we are deeply moved by this amazing performance. But unfortunately, we do have a time limit, so we'll have to shift the focus to some of the updates coming in uh, from uh, uh, the Workers' Party headquarters. That's where the summit was held, and I believe some more updates and some of the, uh, the, uh, the details of what was discussed and possibly uh, what would be building up, what we will be leading up to the next point in the summit. We, let's take a look at the footage right now. So this is probably inside the headquarters of the Central Committee of the Workers' Party of Korea. I've met President Moon Jae-in three times now. And this time we met in spring and this time we are meeting again in autumn here in Pyongyang. And our encounter today is very fitting uh, with the, today's season, autumn. And I am very delighted to welcome President Moon to Pyongyang. And we are all welcoming him. And we have high hopes that we can achieve great achievements. And I think it is also the same with our citizens. We met uh, three times now, just this year. And this time, I felt that we've become really closer. And we have become closer. And there was also a very big accomplishment that has been made. It was all possible thanks to the ceaseless efforts put forth by President Moon Jae-in. The inter-Korean relations, as well as North Korea-U.S. relations, have also improved greatly. And the historic uh, North-U.S. summit was all able thanks to President Moon Jae-in. It was a very historic moment. And it's not an exaggeration to say that the historic encounter between the North and the U.S. was possible thanks to the efforts of President Moon. And we hope that we will have great progress made between the North and the U.S. And the citizens of Pyongyang also have high hopes. And I once again highly praise the efforts put forth by President Moon Jae-in. First of all, Chairman Kim Jong-un and First Lady, Lady Lee Jo ju thank you for the fervent hospitality shown by the Pyongyang citizens. It was so much more than we have expected, and I am deeply grateful for this. This was more than what we have expected. The spring of Panmunjom led to the autumn of Pyongyang. Uh, we have met three times over the past five months, and looking back on our journey, we had the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Games, and before this event, we had Chairman Kim's New Year's Address. And in that address, we saw the bold decision of Chairman Kim. The inter-Korean relations and the uh, North Korea and U.S. relations. We are seeing the new era opening before our eyes, and the progress we made so far was possible due to Chairman Kim's determination. And uh, on my way here, I looked around Pyongyang City Center to notice the surprising development Pyongyang has made. The greeneries were easily spotted everywhere in the mountains. 
and I pay my respect to Chairman Kim's leadership to enhance the lives of the people despite the difficult conditions. And today, together with Chairman Kim, the fact that we are opening a new era of the Korean Peninsula, I have my expectations high and I am very excited. Meanwhile, I feel keenly the heavy weight on our shoulders and the sense of duty. And with this heavy sense of duty, I am here sitting at the table for our summit meeting. And I hope that the summit will bear fruitful results for the 80 million people of the two Koreas, especially marking the national Chuseok holiday. I hope this will be a present for the people of Korea. And the world is watching our meeting, and I hope to show the fruits of peace and prosperity to the people around the world. Thank you very much. And there you have it. It looks like uh, there are some interesting uh, difference in tones, yet similarities. Uh, uh, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un seems to express high expectations, and uh, President Moon Jae-in expressed that he feels a lot of uh, pressure to try and get something substantial out of this meeting. That's right. Um, South Korean President Moon Jae-in said he feels great weight that the two sides have to bear and with heavy responsibility and that he actually said that the, he hopes that this summit produces abundant results for the 80 million Koreans, especially ahead of the Chuseok traditional holiday next week. Uh, meantime, North Korean leader Kim Jong-un said now he feels very close to the South Korean president, having met him three times um, during a short span of time. He said North-South um, relations, North-U.S. relations have improved, and this was also thanks to the ceaseless efforts of President Moon Jae-in. Right. Uh, turning back to you, uh, Dr. Kim, we have guarded optimism when it comes to anything that has to do with uh, North Korea. Uh, at this point, how do you perceive the, the summit uh, proceeding? Uh, producing something tangible in the long run? In the long run, uh, it will be very difficult, but in, in the immediate future, uh, there'll, there can be some good uh, evidence of you know, improved relations between two and North Korea. Because the, if you look at the, the remarks by Kim Jong-un, uh, they, uh, they are really praising uh, President Moon Jae-in's sister effort to a better relationship between the two Koreas. But in addition to that, I think, again, this is a sign of being a normal uh, leader. Uh, one of the remarks he made is, is very clear because there was a rising expectation in among the citizens of Pyongyang, which is, is quite rare for the leadership to talk about that kind of possibility. He's not talking about his authority, his regime, but also the, the people in general, the Pyongyang citizens, they are also having you know, higher expectations about this particular summit meeting. And Mr. Moon Jae-in also made it a very thankful about the, the plan for his wife to visit the children's hospital. I think this is a little bit different from the previous in, uh, in, interviews and because this may touch upon the just normal people on the street rather than hiring you know, high elite of the societies. So this is a sign that they're really open-minded and that they're really concerned about the lives of the every, you know, ordinary people on the street. Uh, again, this is a new departure from the previous attitudes toward their people, both in, in, the, in, the, in the North and the South Korea. Then going back uh, drastically to the early days of the Moon administration's launch, why was uh, Kim Jong-un launching provocations back then before changing around and uh, making that very welcome announcement in, on, on the New Year's speech? That's a good sign because he didn't feel uh, security about his regime because they are going on the tremendous uh, turmoils inside. So one of the reasons why they raised all this kind of threat vis-a-vis -vis South Korea is by doing extra you know, nuclear tests and firing uh, ICBMs and ILBMs, this actually elevated North Korean status to a kind of to a position that they can really have meetings with the outside world in the United States and South Korea. So this was an intentional uh, gesture by North Korea leaders to raise tensions and the peninsula. So this is a plan, this is a part of a long plan for his own uh, regime stability. I, I think so. All right, uh, the long-term plan, hopefully, uh, 
uh, no more sudden uh, turnaround from here on and a continued build up to this very positive momentum we have in the inter-Korean relationship. Well, thank you so much for being here with us again, Minji, uh, for your insights and uh, updates and of course filling in us on the details of what's going on in the footage from North Korea. And uh, Professor Kim, thank you so much for your insights today. My pleasure. Thank you.